On this Holy Thursday evening, we present the sacred oils which were blessed by the bishop at the Chrism Mass. Christ invited those who heard him to share his personal union with the Father through material signs. Christ leads the church through the same signs in the liturgy, from the visible to the invisible. This oil of the sick has been blessed by our bishop for the healing of body, mind, and soul. May the sick who are anointed with it experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love. This oil of catechumens has been blessed by our bishop for the anointing of those preparing for baptism. Through this anointing, they are strengthened by Christ to resist the temptation of sin in all its forms as they prepare for the saving waters of baptism. This sacred chrism, a mixture of olive oil and perfume, has been consecrated by our bishop and the priests of our diocese. It will be used to anoint infants after baptism, those who are to be confirmed, bishops and priests at their ordination, and altars and churches at the time of their dedication.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good evening. Amen. Welcome if you're visiting. We hope you find us faith-filled, prayerful, and welcoming as we begin this sacred journey from darkness to light, 
from slavery to freedom, from death into life. This journey draws us into the mystery of God's redemptive love. And so, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, Take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it 
the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and staff in your hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate. With pilgrimage to the Lord, as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Blessing cup is a communion with the blood of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of the Lord. How can I make a return to the Lord, for all God has done for me. The cup of salvation I will take up. I will call on the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of the Lord. Precious indeed in the 
sight of the Lord is the death of the faithful ones. And I am your servant, your chosen one, for you have set me free. Our blessing of this our communion with the blood of the Lord. Unto your name I will offer my thanks for the debt that I owe to you. In the presence of all who have called on your name, in the courts of the house of the Lord. Our blessing of this A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise and honor to you, O Lord, O Lord. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Gospel of the Lord. One day at this time, about a year ago, I was gathered in a room with diocesan priests and religious order priests at the Chancery downtown for our annual Chrism Day of Renewal. We were fortunate to have a very insightful Jesuit lead us that day, and he said several things that still inspire, that are still with me. My favorite? You guys were ordained to be useful. We laughed, too. Most of us who laughed were thinking, if that's the standard, some people in this room need to step it up. We also laughed because none of us had ever heard that word in any theological reflection on the priesthood, and yet, for me, it's perfect useful. It means we ought to be eager to work, to be involved, to dedicate ourselves, to be tired at the end of the day, to be collaborative, to dedicate ourselves to something beyond ourselves, something of service. We have been baptized to be useful We were made disciples so that we would make 
more disciples. The Eucharist makes us useful. What happens here is useful for the world. Our communion can be useful in a world that is too often divided. Our reconciliation can be useful when we question if it's possible. What we learn here, what the Lord teaches us about the dignity of every human person is useful when we often can act otherwise. What happens here is useful. We're called to serve, to be a part of something larger than ourselves, to recognize the need and the mandate to build a world that is just and peaceful and life-giving. What happens here calls us to serve, calls us to follow the example of the first one who serves. He who lays his life down in love calls us to do that now as a parish when we encounter the poor, the mistreated, and the grieving. When we recognize that the world is still bent on violence and cruelty and greed. What happens here is very useful for the world because we listen, we are taught, God makes a dwelling here among us and in our hearts to teach us what it means to serve and to build the reign of God called to serve, we are called to be useful. Jesus, when he had eaten with his disciples, took off his outer garments and knelt to wash the feet of his disciples, saying, This example I leave you, for if there is love among you, all will know that you are my disciples. I now invite you to follow his example and come forward by way of the center aisles if you wish to have your feet washed.
I ask our elect and chosen ones to come forward. Sisters and brothers, we send you forth to reflect more deeply upon the word of God. We ask that you pray for us as we hold you in our hearts. Together we look forward to the vigil when you will become full members of this community of faith. Go in peace. As a community of faith, let us now offer our prayers of petition to the God who sent his Son as a sign of great love for us. For the Church, the Body of Christ. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, James, our Bishop, and all the shepherds of the Church. For clergy, vowed religious, seminarians, and oblates. For parish pastors, lay ministers, school teachers, and all who strive to model Jesus' teachings. For the world's social, political, and economic leaders. For the wisdom and courage to lead by example and serve others with compassion and mercy. For the healing of divisions within the body of Christ. For Christian unity and the hopeful vision of all the baptized gathered around one table. For all of you who hunger and thirst today, for those without food or clean water, for those who are isolated and lonely, for those struggling with addiction or depression, may the Eucharist nourish you and give you strength. In thanksgiving for those in our community who lift up our voices, for the parish council, faith formation team, school ministry team, social concerns committee, and all who give their time and talent to the gospel message. For the beloved sick in our parish and their caregivers, 
for all who have died in our families and sister parish, Santa Maria, Madre de los Pobres, for everlasting life at the Lord's heavenly banquet. We thank you, God, for the gift of this sacrifice, which unites us on this journey of faith. Help us to build your reign by the lives we lead and the community we shape, so that all we say and do may bring your goodness to light. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For Christ is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, almighty God, his Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through our participation at this altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and communion with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. is our food, his passion is recalled, grace fills our hearts, and we receive a pledge of the glory to come. How holy this feast in which Christ is our food. His passion is recalled, grace fills our hearts, and we receive a pledge of the glory to come. 
Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you will not thirst. Christ is the bread of life, the true bread sent from the Father. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to him and never be hungry. Trust in him and you will not thirst. Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, but this is the bread come down from heaven. Eat this bread, drink this cup, Come to him and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup. Trust in him and you will not thirst. Eat his flesh and drink his blood and Christ will raise you up on the last day. Eat this bread, drink this cup, trust in him and you will be hungry.
invite our ministers who take the Eucharist to our homebound parishioners to come forward. Please take the Eucharist we have shared this evening to our brothers and sisters who are not able to be with us. Assure them of our prayers and affection and let us know of any need or concern they have. Go in peace. Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so may we enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us process the bread of life to our place of reservation. Please join the procession once it passes you. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament will be in the chapel until 10 p.m. <laughs> 